Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Rebuilding Newcastle. It's the final episode of season one. Taking us a bit longer than some of the Football Manager YouTubers to get there, but bear in mind that this isn't my full-time job. I work on two YouTube channels as well. It's hard to make that many videos, but before we get into it, this is where I usually hype up the video about what you're going to see. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to how you guys have supported the first series on the channel. I didn't expect it to do so well. I've had a couple of videos basically become my highest videos ever on the channel. You guys really have gone crazy in terms of views and likes and comments and even the subscriber count is going mental. So yeah, I, I just want to say a massive thank you. In terms of what you're going to see today now that we can big it up, we have a huge game, the final game of the season. Depending on what happens in this match, we're either going to come fourth or first in the league. There's a big gap between what could potentially happen. We've reached Champions League, but now it depends on where we can finish in our first league season here at Newcastle. Talk about future transfer plans, that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Hello everybody, Jake here. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Like I say, massive thank you for how you have supported this series so far. Hopefully you'll keep it up with this episode and then we've got a massive transfer episode coming up next where we've got plenty of money to spend which we'll talk about in a second and where we might spend it. But if you do enjoy this video, if you just want to be awesome like you have been so far, hit that like button. It really does help in spreading these videos out to as many people as possible and you guys have proved that with the first few episodes. So yeah, do that if you can. Comment down below what you thought of this season, what you think will happen in today's match and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell as we go for 5,000 subscribers. It was my goal to get before the end of Christmas and you guys have made it look fairly, fairly likely. Anyway, speaking of fairly likely, winning the league, I mentioned it at the start, it's probably very unlikely because obviously Manchester United, as you can see here, based on how the final games of the season have gone, they are three games ahead of us. So they'd have to lose, we'd have to win, at which point then you've also got to count goal difference where they're 13 goals ahead of us. So if we can win like 7-0 and they lose 6-0, maybe we'll be okay, but I wouldn't count on it because then you've also got to factor in Liverpool who are one point behind Manchester United, again on a higher goal difference. It looks like our aim today should really be to secure this third place spot and not let Manchester City overtake us and steal our third place spot because obviously we don't want that. We want to finish as high as we can in our first season here. And I think in the first season to have finished higher than Manchester City, Arsenal, Chelsea, obviously Tottenham you expect because Tottenham are absolutely... No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not trying to cause any enemies here. But yeah, we, we do want to finish as high as possible. And I think we could go a long way towards that today by beating Brighton, raise our club reputation, get some money into the club ahead of our Champions League run next season which of course we are now guaranteed to be in which woo celebration the series will end when we win a Champions League so I guess this is a good start as anything um yeah I, what else should I say let's get right into it the manager performance it has been going great that is because on the pitch we are performing well we're performing should I say unbelievably um I'm trying to think when you guys last saw us it was a fairly big game not too long ago wasn't it yes it was yeah I remember it now oh this has brought back some horrible memories if you haven't watched last episode yet watch it because this was a game and a half. A few of you guys have commented down below saying that there was a game like this between Liverpool and Newcastle back in the day. I watched it on YouTube. Yeah, um, it was a few years before I was born, but it did look like a pretty intense match. And we kind of replicated it here with a 95th, whatever it was, 94th minute winner. Naby Keita in this sense, but back in the day it was Stan Collymore for Liverpool, I believe. So we replicated that. Unfortunately, though, because if we'd won that game, who knows what could have happened right now. We could potentially be winning the league with Newcastle. We then beat Arsenal 4-0. Standard stuff. They're not a great club. No, I'm joking. Again, not trying to cause any issues here. We beat Burnley 3-0. Um, St. Maximan getting on the goal sheet, which is nice to see. Goal sheet? Score sheet. That's what I should have said. Uh, which is nice to see because he might be one that I'm potentially looking to replace in the transfer window. So it's it's good that he's performing because he's got to do something. Um, we then drew 2-2 with Wolves. Again, if we won that, could have been a different story today. We would have been level on points with Liverpool. And then Manchester United would only have been a point off. It could have been realistic, but it was a 93rd minute penalty from Raul Jimenez. And at that point, I did kind of not give up on the league title, but is very unlikely. The team didn't though, they kept going. They pushed on for a 3-0 win against Chelsea with Wilson, Badashile and Nyanzu getting the goals for his there. Uh, a bit of a mix of the old team and the new team. And then Basuma and Nyanzu getting the goals against Crystal Palace to give us a 2-0 win. Now we have Brighton in the league who are 15th place. In terms of who is performing great, Nyanzu has had the best average match rating across the season. He's worth a significant amount of money compared to what we paid for him. We managed to remove his release clause in a contract negotiation, which again 
is awesome. He's a physical monster, an aerial threat at corners. This guy is the future of our back line. And Badashile has not done a bad job either in trying to get me to convince, basically, to keep him in there next to Nyanzu and not replace him. And I've got no reason to, really. Maybe we'll look for someone to compete, but I don't think he necessarily needs replacing. Uh, Callum Wilson, done amazing, 22 goals. It might be the last year that Callum Wilson is our main striker, though, just because he's 30 years old. I don't really want to hold out on a 30-year-old striker for a few years as our main guy. You guys know how it is if you play football manager. 25 is already too old. 30 years old, I'm not sure I want Callum Wilson leading the line for his next year. So that's somewhere we might have to invest in. And we have got money to do so. We've got £99 million with £612,000 in the wage budget. So likely going to shift some of that around if we bring some of that towards a transfer budget. £300,000 of wage budget, £116 million. We've got players coming in already. We're probably going to sell a few as well because there is interest in some of our players. And in terms of where I want to improve, if we go to squad depth, I think, and I've been writing it down on a piece of paper, but I think, like I say, a striker to compete up there for Wilson for that starting spot. Morelos didn't really do it this season. He's not bad. He's just not at Callum Wilson's level or higher. Uh, Rafina and St. Maximan, obviously Rafina really is on the other side, so we'll forget about him. I think someone to compete with St. Maximan at St. Maximan's level or higher, just to compete for that inside forward position. I think Rafina and Marcus Edwards is fine on the right-hand side. Weigel. I think we need one more quality, quality midfielder. So that's something we'll be looking for. Maybe a Declan Rice or something like that. Who knows? Um, right back, I may be in a replacement on Zeki Selic. I don't mind him. I just think he might not be good enough quality to eventually win a Champions League with. He's good enough to be a backup in that position but maybe not a starter. So I think that's where I'll mainly invest, a striker, a winger, a midfielder, and a right back. Anywhere else will just be circumstantial, I think. So if a centre-back wants to leave, we'll buy a centre-back. If Grimaldo decides to leave, we'll buy a left-back, that kind of thing. But not necessarily looking to replace them unless something comes about. Um, with that being said, though, I think we're pretty much ready to get into the final game of the season. I'm, I'm very excited for this game, but I'm also very excited to get right into the transfer window afterwards for the next episode. Um, and I do just want to say a massive thank you again to you guys for how you supported the series. You know what we will do, actually? I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to the dev center and try and find that young 18-year-old, 16-year-old, uh, sorry, who looked really good. Will he be able to play if we put him into the first team? Let's have a look. Richard Crockard, just because I love his name, he genuinely looks like he is, might be the future of this club. Um, there he is, right. How do we get him onto the bench? Who can he replace? Um, Jamal Lewis can miss a game on the bench, I think. Yeah, that'll be fine. We will have Crockard on the bench and try and bring him on. Um, if you guys want to have your name on top of a youth intake player, it could potentially replace his name, but I think we should all leave that name just how it is so that I can mess it up in a video a few times. Richard Crockard. But yeah, if you guys do want your name on a youth intake player or just want to support the series, there is a join button that you're free to check out. There's a little video where I'll explain it. The more I've been making videos over the last month and seeing like the videos kind of blow up on my own channel, the more that I want to do as much as I can to potentially do this as a permanent thing in the future. So yeah, just, just a massive thank you. This is what we're going for in today's match. Carl Darlow is in goal, Ivakovic still out injured, Tolisso doing fine at right back, so he comes in with Nyanzu, Badashile and Grimaldo, Julian Weigel, Willock, Basuma, Rafina, St. Maxman and Callum Wilson. Weigel, um, just in case some of you guys were wondering why he suddenly started playing amazing, he's got very good attributes to be a perfect distributor in this position. All I basically did was, he already had some really great traits, but he had a trait that was something like uh, pay, play short passes or play safe passes. I just went to the training and we trained it out of him because... Why would you force this guy to play short passes when he can play absolutely monstrous balls, which he tried to do as much as he could in the last game against Liverpool, and we saw the effect that that could have. Um, I've also had a few people asking about the tactic we're using. I'll just quickly explain it. It is literally the 4 3 3 Kagan Press uh, tactic with just some role switch that you can see here. So it's the preset that Football Manager provides. If your roles look different, that's just because I've switched them. So for example, I'm not sure if that starts off as an inside forward, but I switched it to that. I'm not sure if it starts off as a Mazala, but I've switched it to that. Um, that's pretty much it. There's no individual instructions, no additional tactical instructions here. Literally just a preset. So enough talking. We've got Crockard on the bench. We've got a match to win against Brighton. We shouldn't be taking it easy though, because it's still going to be a potentially hard match. We'll give him number 19. We'll submit the numbers and we'll get straight into it. So team talk, I don't know what we say. Do we like ease the pressure or put pressure on I will I know there's I know it's impossible to win the league but I will be keeping an eye on that Manchester United match but realistically it's Liverpool that I want to see slip up because third would be great but if we can take second place on the last day of the season I think that'll be a huge result so what I might try and do is switch this visualizer for the latest scores there we go we can see what's going on it's Liverpool against Man U 
that's that's very good for once cause just because i know we can't really catch man U at the top there i'm hoping man U beat liverpool because that that would be massive for us oh this is far too quick sorry this is from when i play off camera where i try to speed it up just so i can get through the games but we'll slow it down for the match and rafina's oh <laughs> oh Honestly, I saw Rafina score a goal and I thought, we don't have a blue kit. How, how's Rafina scored? And then I realised they've got a player called Rafina and he scored after five minutes. Tarek Lamptey wouldn't be a bad sign into Talis Mango. Oh, he's a, um, not Mango, Magno. He was a wonder kid of last year. I'm sure he's good this year too. Rafina got space away from our Rafina and buried it into a corner. It's a very good Brighton team, you know. Talis Magno. I'm going to scout him. I am, I am going to scout him because he was very good last year. I just don't know if he still is. But he's playing up front in the front three with McAllister, Lalana, and then everything behind that is really good. Like Cucurella, Lamptey as wing backs. It's pretty much perfect. So that does put us in fourth place. Obviously, we are guaranteed fourth. We can't go anywhere below that. But in terms of the other games, Manchester City are losing. Man U Liverpool is still a draw. So yeah, we need to get ahead while we can. I'm hoping that was just a bad start because if we do look at in terms of XG, we are dominating the game. It was just a random shot from Brighton, which has found its way into the back of the net. But here's our chance to equalise. Rafina with the corner. Badashile with a he oh, header flicked on at the near post. I can't speak today. He's going to flick it into the bottom corner. Uh, these near post corners seem to be very effective, although that's not necessarily a tactic that I've done to make it like that. This is just corners with tall centre-backs in Football Manager currently, I guess. Manchester City being beaten 3-0 by Everton, which is great news for us. It means... Unless we really balls it up here, we should secure that third place spot. But Brighton are trying to do stuff from that side, from uh, where Grimaldo should be, our left back, that right-hand side. They've had a corner there where they've caused a problem, and a decent, obviously the goal from Rafina came from that area. And it is Lamptey again running up that side. Hopefully we can deal with it this time. He's found Lallana, who we should be dealing with. He's, he's not the world's greatest player. But Teles Magno is through again. He's causing a lot of hassle today, but Kyle Darlow stands tall. Fair play to him. I gave him a lot of... Uh, Gave him a lot of stick, I suppose, when Levakovic was out, particularly in that last game against Liverpool where I half-blamed him for some of the goals. But he's been doing fine. I, I can't really complain as a backup keeper. I think I'll keep him around. He's English as well, homegrown nation and all that stuff. It, it's always useful. So I think Cardalo has done enough here to secure his place as the backup keeper next season. Joe Willock is in the box. He is an English talent for us who is rather useful because he keeps playing really well. And it's nice that we have a few homegrown players in him and Loftus-Cheek. And John Joe Shelby, of course, don't forget him in midfield who are very effective for us but Tolisso having to do something there to stop a pretty easy goal for Brighton at the back post they're playing a lot better than I expected they would maybe it's time for me to change things um yeah media have given you a lot of credit but this isn't the best performance I'm glad that we should at least right now if we just take away the Brighton formation and put the league table we are sitting in third place still because Liverpool are losing we really need a win here because it would give us that second place spot more money better reputation and just a more successful season if we finish second right so let's go for that Badashile with a second of the game another Rafina corner in at the near post Badashile I talked about I don't have any reason to replace him I now definitely don't because he scored two goals in the most important game of the season both of which towering headers he is like six foot four um good to have an aerial presence there he's only 21 as well he's got room to grow and we have finished the season currently if it all stayed like this three points behind United three points off winning the league I think that's a great first season considering we, we've still got plenty of players to replace and invest in. Our squad is not at the level of the other top four, top six clubs yet. It still isn't. And we've got money to spend this summer, so I think we can definitely get there, bridge that gap, and become a Champions League challenging team. Why do I even say it? <laughs> Brighton, make it 2-2. It's a very easy goal. Um, I think the wing-back system is kind of doing us in. We haven't played too many teams who play this formation. And it was Dan Byrne, I think, the like six foot seven left-back who just put in an amazing cross. And Talis Magno was free at the back post, headed away. We might be good at attacking headers from a corner, but it looks like we can't defend headers when they come into the box. We should, though, take Talisso off, I think, although there's no one to really come on for him. That might be an issue. Um, Richard Crocard, just for the fun of it, you're going to come on on that right wing and Rafina can switch over. I'm also, I don't know why I'm doing the fun of it kind of substitutions in a match like this, but I just feel like doing it. I, I just think he's going to score the winner or something. Um, Nyanzu not having the best of games. Maybe we shift Nyanzu out. No, he can't do it either. Can Grimaldo do a job? I don't know. Um, if we just click this, who is the best other option? Morelos. 
are we about to bring on <laughs> Alfredo Morelos at right back? No, we're not. We're going to try Marcus Edwards instead. I don't know why we're doing it. Um, I'm risking everything in a game like this to bring on two players who are absolutely awful in their positions, but I can't play an injured Tolisso. I don't have many other options. You saw that there was pretty much no one else we could have used. Um, Jamal Lewis got taken off the bench as well, so I can't even switch Grimaldo over and work on it from there. Everyone's a half-star player, so why not use Edwards? Nyanzu Badashile, um, final sub can be... You're going to think I'm taking a mick. I'm telling you, he's going to score the winner. Brighton are probably absolutely rubbing their hands together after seeing these transfers that I've made. Uh, Substitution, sorry. John Joe Shelby is on the pitch. Liverpool equalise. It wouldn't have meant too much anyway. If we, actually, no, if we do win... Yeah, it wouldn't have, if we had won, it wouldn't have made a difference right now anyway because of the other results. We would still be in the same position. But we do have a highlight. Come on, tell me it's one of my substitutes that's going to score. This right-hand side of Shelby, Edwards and Crockard is a brand new right-hand side. Edwards, apparently now that he's in right-back, can't pass the ball. But he does win the ball back. He can defend. Shelby's making the run forward, though. It's a poor pass again from Edwards. Why does putting him at right-wing back, uh, right-back sorry, suddenly mean that he just can't play a pass? That does not make sense. But it might be a highlight for us still, because Badashile does well in defence. He's done well this game. His best performance at the club so far. Basuma wins the header, but only gives it back to Brighton. And the longer this goes on, the more I think this is just going to be a Brighton goal to end our hopes. But Grimaldo is on the ball. One on ball forward to Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson with one final goal of the season. He's got it. Grimaldo has arguably been a disappointment this season, considering how much faith I had in him. But that is what we want to see from him. A great ball on that left-hand side. Uh, it was a bit of a scramble for the ball for a long time there. But once Grimaldo got it and he saw the space, you know that once Wilson's in behind like this, he's probably going to finish it. And he did. He finished it really well. This is why I'm saying I don't want to completely replace Wilson, like get rid of him. I just want him uh, or maybe not the guaranteed starter that he is currently. And I've just seen Liverpool are now losing, which means we are currently going to finish second unless there's another late uh, equaliser for Brighton here. They've done well all game. They probably would deserve it. And they have got it. Abdallah Sima. I've never heard of him. I don't know if he plays for him in real life or not. He's gone and volleyed at home from a Tarek Lamptey cross. Their wing-backs have caused us problems all game from them crossing positions. And that has meant that we will finish third. Okay. Um, I don't really think any of my substitutions had a negative effect there. Shelby, though, didn't play too well. Edwards, not too well. What did Crockard get? Crockard got a 6.9 though, so well done to Crockard on his debut. Um, considering we were, yeah, I am disappointed we didn't win, but at the end of the day, it's fine. I'll take a fair place finish. Um, yeah, a good season overall. Definitely a good season. Just a bit annoying that if we were to have won this game and maybe the Wolves game, we could have won the whole league, but it's fine. Badashile doing very well. And now we've got money to spend, we've got players to bring into the club, we've got changes to make, we've got a second season to record. So that is all going to be happening very soon. I want to thank you all again for the massive support you've shown on the videos. You're all awesome. Keep liking, keep commenting. We'll see where this series goes. If no one else watches it from now on, then I'm fine with that because we've done so well with how this series has gone. Hopefully we'll hit 5,000 subscribers soon before Christmas. That'll be the milestone. But yeah, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.